The struggles continue in Manchester, the other side of it, that is, as the third loss in four games for Manchester United, this time at the hand of Aston Villa, as Courtney Haas almost burned down the Haas in the Theatre of Dreams. Janish, talk to me about the struggles that United continue to have under coach Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at this point. Well, that, that 4-1 uh, win against Leeds United seems so far away with Old Trafford, uh, you know, uh, in standing ovation and Cristiano Ronaldo, of course, scoring on his debut. Uh, three losses in the last four games uh, uh, for Manchester United and questions continue to be asked about the team itself and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, right? I mean, ahead of this season, we were talking about four teams fighting for the title and, you know, my... You know, my worries were always uh, when Manchester United were mentioned as one of the title contenders was uh, is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and the team itself uh, better than Pep Guardiola, Thomas Tuchel and, and Jorgen Klopp. The answer to that was always no. And we seem to see it. I don't want to go from, a, you know, from a very high to a low because the season is a long time. But it was an opportunity loss in a game where I felt that Aston Villa came into Old Trafford absolutely unafraid, willing to play, wanting to get the three points and we're for long stretches the better team in, uh, in that so uh, you know I suppose you would have fell for Courtney Haas because he would have gone from uh, uh, from hero to goat I suppose uh, mm -hmm. uh, but you know uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was mentioning one manager I think he meant Jurgen Klopp about the penalties and all that that they haven't gotten any they got one late uh, and you know we also got an answer to a question who was going to take it Bruno Fernandes or Cristiano Ronaldo well, I guess next time we will know probably for sure who's going to be taking that. But overall, uh, you know, uh, full of praise and uh, of Aston Villa because it was a tremendous performance, as I've said, not only on the counter, but also in possession. Ali Watkins, absolutely wonderful. Danny Ings, great in support. Uh, obviously, they didn't have Axel Tuan Zebi uh, uh, because he was playing against the parent club. Dean Smith did not change the system. He inserted Courtney Haas into that and trusting him in that position. And I think it paid off a massive, massive win and huge questions once again about uh, Manchester United in terms of their contending for the title and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in terms of his managing the game. Yeah, this is a, a game and a match. So you look at it and this is not United just losing this. This is when where Aston Villa went out and they won this match, especially in the middle of the park. Janus talked to me about that midfield for Manchester United that was not very evident here today. Uh, absolutely. Look, as much as I like Scott McTominay and Fred, they, they are in a, inadequate, uh, really, uh, pairing for a club as big as this. I mean, if you look at Manchester United in all different positions, you have quality and star quality in many of them, right? So if you're talking about the Manchester United uh, as a contender and a massive club as they are, a club that has won everything in the world and are trying to get, get back to that level, you have to look at that and you see it today and it just wasn't good enough, right? I mean, they were non-existent. I still don't understand, you know, uh, 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 that they've lasted for so long. As I've said, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer managing the game, it wasn't easy to some degree. I want to give him uh, some latitude here because obviously he had two enforced decisions, Luke Shaw early on, which is a massive loss, right? Of course, and, and Harry Maguire as well. So those two substitutions were wasted. Cavani, it's not that I don't think Cavani uh, he was a bad choice, although he was beaten on that corner where Courtney Haas scored the goal. And, and Edison Cavani doesn't get beat in the air uh, very, very often. Uh, that is for sure. But if you look at Jesse Lingard with that late goal against West Ham, he's been good so far. And you have Jaden Sancho, who you paid millions and millions and millions of pounds for. Uh, and, and so... You know, you have Cristiano Ronaldo. Why are you afraid to take him off? Why are you afraid to take off Paul Pogba or Bruno Fernandes? I'm not insinuating that a couple of them should have been taken, but why do you need Cristiano Ronaldo and Cavani if you need service for one or both, right? So Jaden Sancho and even Lingard would have been better choices for that last substitution. But bottom line is, in the center, center of the pitch, Manchester United are not good enough if you compare them uh, to some of the other title contenders. The biggest question that a lot of people had coming into this season was answered today. Who was going to take those penalties? We saw that it was Bruno Fernandes. He had over a 90% conversion rate mm -hmm. over Cristiano Ronaldo. Of course, when we look back, it's easy to say that Ronaldo should have been the one to take it because of the miss. But talk to me about that, that type of situation, Janis. When you are Bruno Fernandes, you know you have Ronaldo behind you. 
It's injury time. You're at home. Talk to me about the pressure that's going through his mind. Yeah, I mean, th there's always pressure, but let's be honest. I mean, I, I think there may be rotation, but I'm not going to put this on Bruno Fernandes because, as you've mentioned, I mean, he's been he's been so good in that, uh, you know, in all aspects of the game. He's been the best player for Manchester United for, you know, the last couple of seasons. Uh, uh, yeah, I, he went for power, which surprised me a little bit because, you know, I mean, he really skied that uh, uh, penalty. Did he feel pressure from Cristiano Ronaldo? I don't think so. I don't think it was a pressure knowing that Cristiano Ronaldo was there and maybe it was a little bit of pressure late in the game and, and you, sometimes it goes wrong for you. So I think Bruno Fernandes will get the benefit of the doubt at some stage, maybe even with the next penalty. Coaches very often like to do that, right? When you miss it, they want you to get that confidence right back. And although it's easy for us to say that, well, it has to be Cristiano Ronaldo uh, right away. I wouldn't be surprised if that's not the case. That next penalty that's going to come their way, Bruno Fernandes is going to get a chance to redeem himself. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.